everyone, and welcome to Cooking with Allergies. So, I told you in a previous video I would tell you my eczema story. Well, here it is. And sorry for looking down. I'm reading this from a Word doc on my iPad. So, right after I was born, I developed eczema. But my mom didn't think much of it because my siblings all had eczema when they were babies. And they had grown out of it. But unlike them, I didn't grow out of it. Mine got worse. So when I was three, it was summer. And my mom took our family to an event. And she had put me in tights so I wouldn't scratch. But I was sweating, it was summer, and if you didn't know, Sweat has salt in it, so imagine putting salt in an open wound. That was my body 24-7 at that point. So I was trying to scratch and scratch and scratch, and Mom would try and put some barrier between me and my skin because she didn't want me to scratch myself down to the bone. That's how severe it was. So it was either sweat, or scratch myself down to the bone. She chose the lesser of two evils. So my parents took me to several dermatologists, but no one could really give a long-term plan except hoping I could grow out of it. We tried many things. We tried bathing and not bathing. And by not bathing, I mean we would say, bathe me every day, and by not bathing, Sorry, by bathing, I mean we would say bathe me every day, and by not bathing, we would bathe me less frequently. So we tried lotions, creams, ointments, tropical steroids, trop, sorry, not tropical, topical. Topical means put on skin, and steroids means anti-inflammatory drug. We tried other topical meds. We tried antihistamines, which made me sleep a lot, like Benadryl. Benadryl is an antihistamine. And an antihistamine, which made my appetite increase if it was really bad, and my skin got infected, we tried antibiotics. This is a sum of every med until about when I was 14. In the middle, when I was four, we discovered food allergies which I kind of already covered in another video. Now we are to where I am 8 to 10. They took me to a psychologist who specialized in pain and itching, and she tried to help me not itch and scratch, which was very hard when your whole body is in pain. We tried wet wraps, so say, uh kitchen towels soaked in water and attaching them to your it, mostly it was my under my knees and we tried diapers soaked in water for an entire night those were not very comfortable and none of it worked we tried we tried gloves taped to my hands so i wouldn't scratch but it also because it was gloves it was very warm so then my whole hand would be irritated. And also that was still at the point where I sucked my thumb. So whole mouth of whole mouth of glove there. <laughs> my mom also started making my own clothes because regular clothes were itchy and I also wore some of my dad's old, really soft t shirts. And some people in my church may remember I used to just walk around in a t shirt and a skirt. No shoes whatsoever, because my feet would hurt really, really bad. I'm going to attach a picture here. This picture, hold on, let me pull it in front of me. This picture has me having, if you, you can see it, my skin is broken. Sometimes during the summer, I would get dirt in there. And that's, and it would just hurt. You can't put shoes on that. So I would walk around church wearing no shoes. And 
it would just hurt to walk because you're opening the skin by that movement. So we finally got me to, so, sorry, that guy, enough. So all the dermatologists in our local area did all they could. So we finally got me to John Hopkins to see Dr. Cohen. When we got to him, he said I was one of the most severe cases he had ever seen. So basically my arms were less worse than my legs, but those were pretty bad. And my legs were cracked or had scabs all over. It was really, really bad. So he put me on methotrexate, which is a chemotherapy drug, which helped cause de it decreased my overactive immune system and it decreased the inflammation. So basically it helped with infection. This is to when I was about 10 to 12. Dr. Cohen had helped me with my care and meds more than anyone else, whereas many other dermatologists wanted to see, treat, and get out the door, he took a personal interest in me. So the only thing we could use on my skin that worked was trimcinolone. It is a steroid ointment, which worked, so we bought it by the tub and our insurance paid for it. I used so much of it, I had some of the side effects of steroids, st uh, steroid usage, such as weight gain, stretch marks. I had a buffalo hump, which is a fatty lump on your back. And I had a moon face, which is just a, sh uh, it means your face is retaining water, so it means that your face becomes a circular, na uh, sh circular shape. Even though we didn't like the side effects, we didn't know what else to do when it was working. <sighs> Even though doing all these things, my skin was barely under control. If we stopped one of these things, my skin would hurt and it's not pretty. <sighs> oh, sorry. My skin was barely under control. When I was not asleep from Benadryl, I was distracted from itching and trying not to scratch. Then when I was 14, around there, they came out with a new medicine called Dupixent, which is in the class of monoclonal antibody, which is a shot I get in my stomach every two weeks, three weeks, around there. We usually skimp off because we don't meet our deductible or something. It costs a lot of money. Three thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. So I get that shot every two weeks. And it cleared up my skin about 99% of what it was. I no longer have red all over. I actually have skin. I didn't even know I had these little freckles. But I do still have, if you can see, I do still have stretch marks here. And I have stretch marks on my inner legs from knee up. That will always be there. There's no way to not do that. So I will always have stretch marks. And sometimes there are stretch marks um, below my knee. But it was mostly because I had sores all in my inner legs. So I would just apply it and apply it because it helped. Okay, so... That... And I I still have eczema. And I probably will for the rest of my life. But Dupixent keeps it under control. We have not tested what my skin would look like if I didn't do Dupixent. We probably never will. But it is a thing I've wondered. Okay, so now side effects of all that I am. I am different than other people. I can't sweat that much without hurting a little. Because if it, I have a sore or something, it can get in there and it hurts. S 
still. Uh, and some people I know may have noticed that I never wear long sleeve shirts. I'm always, I always prefer the cold to wearing a coat. That's because of this. I would rather get hypothermia from the cold than sweat as much as I have felt. I prefer the cold. I like cold. I prefer t-shirts over lawn dresses. It's just the thing I am. Ugh. I have a mentality of helping because I don't want anyone to go through close to what I had to. My life is pretty painful. I will always look like I have dry patches on my skin in the fall. Like, I think there's one right here. Like, my skin's flaking. That's because my face is drier than the rest of my body usually. My face, I, in puberty, I don't get many pimples. Or, um, because my face isn't that oily. It's drier than normal. So, I, in the fall and the winter, I have those dry patches. I have flaking skin. In the summer, I have, let's see, what is it? I have a irritated lip because I keep licking my lips so much from the sweat. And in the spring, well, spring, spring's pretty good. So, I can't be in the heat too long. Or else my face will be lobster red. <laughs> That's a phrase my family has used for years. Because I would be as red, um, almost as red as a lobster. I can use some lotions now because my skin isn't as broken up. And lo some lotions have alcohol in them. So, same analogy as salt in the wound. Alcohol in the wound. Ugh. My mom still washes all of her clothes in allergy-friendly laundry detergents and not fabric softener. But I'm pretty good. Okay, so. I was so knocked out and distracted, the development of my brain was slowed down. Because I was either watching something on a screen, scratching, or sleeping. Those aren't very good for development of things. Except if you put, I guess, school on a screen. I would basically watch anything. Although I would get bored, I guess. I am a year behind of what they anticipated. So I'm a year... Sorry. I'm a year behind my siblings at this age. So right now I'm in... I'm 16 and I'm in 10th grade. Normally I would be, say, 11th grade, I think. Okay, so now the emotional side <clears throat> because I had to go through all of that I've built up some mental toughness I guess so I can withstand some major pain and many things I still haven't discovered but during all that I hate crying I just do it probably has something to do with the pain because tears also have salt in them so I try not to cry when possible which isn't very often but, okay, so some of you might be booing, eyeing, I guess, crying, possibly, and that's okay. My story is a sad one, but it's a needed one, because my life is not like anyone others. I've experienced much pain, so I can help people not do, not have to deal with that pain. Like, when... When I would, ha when I would, ha I, sometimes it hurt so much I wanted to scream. So, my dad, because he didn't want a screaming child in his house, he would say, squeeze my hand as much as it hurts. So, for fun, <laughs> to, in the funniness of that moment, I would squeeze his hand as hard as I could. Like, squeezing it, squeezing it as much as an eight-year-old can. And same thing with my siblings. My siblings would do the same things. They would do squeeze my hand. <sighs> Sorry. Um. <sighs> okay, so. 
in another video, I told you, oh, sorry, I told you some of the stories of my allergies. Well, I will try to do my best, but it is under a lot of being knocked out and sleeping. So, just for an overview for one of these stories, I had a lot of trouble sleeping because I would either scratch if I wasn't distracted, and because of that, I have, because I didn't go to sleep on my own at night, I've had to take melatonin to sleep from now on. So, here we go. So, this is in the period of methotrexate. With the methotrexate, you had to t have your blood drawn to make sure that your liver was okay. So I remember going to John Hopkins and having my blood drawn and not liking it at first because, well, they're putting a needle in your arm. But then my dad said, if you don't cry, I'll take you to McDonald's. And I have never cried again for blood draws. I like watching it. Some people look away, some do all that. At John Hopkins, when I go on my appointment, I ask, can I have a, do I have to have a blood draw? <laughs> so, it's, I'm a very weird person. Okay, I remember going to church picnics in the summer, very hot in the summer, and having to leave early because of the heat, and me sweating and all of that going into my skin, and wanting not to leave. But I had to because I was scratching more and I or was hurting every time I walked. I remember when I would at night watch things like kid movies on my brother's iPod and would watch things and wake up at the end of them. So a lot of the movies that you guys have probably watched one or two times, I've watched maybe 20. Okay, so... Last story, I remember one night I had the iPod. I watched a movie, and in the middle of the night I woke up, so I fell asleep in the middle of the movie, and the iPod had died. So I scrambled down from my bunk bed and got a charger. So I sat on the floor, and I watched on the floor the rest of the night. But I woke up. I woke up with my baby blanket. I kept it for many, many years because it was soft. I used to put it over quilts because they're so soft. And I woke up to my parents discussing how I needed help for my skin because I couldn't be like this. I was on a wooden floor watching a movie, sleeping, with nothing but a baby blanket and a small floor pillow. And I couldn't do that. So, I guess, kind of, I guess, I'm a little addicted to watching at that age, because it would keep me from scratching. So, some of the movies I would watch, just for an overview of that, were, let's see, Bolt, uh, Narnia, Lion, or, um, Prince Caspian, Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, let's see, what else? Those were the main ones. Uh, there was Babe. There were many other ones. I think there were at most six out of all of them. So, six movies watching over and over and over and over and over. So, that's pretty excessive. So, if one of you is watching a movie, I might say, I don't want to watch this movie. I watched it maybe 20 times. So I sometimes, you know the movies where you watch it so much that it's, you can maybe quote the lines. That's kind of the same for me. I've watched, I've woken up to the end of Bolt so many times. It's kind of boring now. I mean, it's kind of fun to watch because, you know, they're running through a, a burning building. But <laughs> it still, still brings back memories. Okay, so that is my allergy story. So I have many good 
and bad memories, but it has affected my life, and sometimes, sometimes, eczema is hereditary, so it could pass on to my child, and they could get it, but all I can hope is that the medicine is better and I can get them the care he or she needs. That's one of the fears I have, that my child would have to experience what I have. But hopefully I can do the thing, hopefully the medicine I'm taking is okay for little kids. I was basically, when I got it, I was 14. I had basically grown up. My body was an adult body. So they, they tried to get me to Pixend. Because I couldn't wait four years. Imagine. 18, it's not okay for me. Four years, I wouldn't be able to get any school done. Mm. Well, <sighs> crying more than I thought I would. <sighs> well, that's the story of my eczema. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I really do appreciate all of it. I'll see you next time.